Welcome to Uncopyable Women in Sales. If you're looking for actionable insights and real world tools to turbocharge your sales starting tomorrow, well, you're in the right place. Your host, Kay Miller, earned the affectionate nickname Muffler Mama when she sold more automotive mufflers than anyone else in the world. In this podcast, Kay will talk to another superstar woman in sales as they reveal uncopyable strategies you can use to rack up more leads, snag dream clients, and take your sales numbers through the roof. Stay tuned and get ready to make more sales. And how about this? More money. Today, I'm chatting with Lauren Gibson. And to say Lauren has an eclectic background is an understatement. She has experience in sales, project management, customer research, and content creation. She's worked in industries from nonprofit to blockchain technology. And by the way, Lauren has been to 44 countries and lived in six of them. Lauren, wow. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Grateful to be here, Kay. So I met you through my husband, Steve, who probably everyone on this podcast knows, Steve, uh, through Community Empire, an online platform that I would like to talk about. But I would like to talk also about your sales background in some really unique industries and how you are making a transition. And then also touch on LinkedIn because you accomplished a feat of posting every day for quite a while. So those are some of the things I'd like to talk about. So why don't you tell us first, what's Community Empire? Sure, Kay. So Community Empire is a place for community builders So I found Steve in this place because he's really so helpful in there. And it was created from a uh, individual called Greg Eisenberg, who has built this idea of building communities that sell products and that sell something that is more, uh, that is, that is more close to what people want in, in life, not just selling them a thing, but selling them a feeling of being part of a community. And I think that is a general idea of where we are trending in terms of technology and sales and, uh, and where we're going in life in general. Definitely. I think that whole process is getting way more sophisticated And especially in this day and age, connection is so huge. You know, first of all, we've got so much technology that, of course, I wasn't used to till I was, you know, well into adulthood. And then we had COVID, which, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, caused all kinds of issues. So community in general, that's something I'm really interested in, too, with the listeners of this podcast. So very fascinated by that aspect. I'd like to talk some about your background. We'll get to the fact that you have been to 44 countries and lived in six countries, which is amazing. (laughs) But before we do, let's talk a little bit about your sales background. And the listeners might be sales professionals. They also might be entrepreneurs or business owners. You know, we're all in sales. So I would like to get your take on some of the sales positions you've had and what you would recommend to other people listening. Big Sounds question. good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, let's start from the beginning. This wasn't a position that I applied for, but I remember when I was young, I was around eight years old, and we were in the playground and someone had created basically a capitalist game utilizing acorns. And everyone would come to pl- the playground every every day and we would bring things that we would trade for acorns. And I loved trading for the lowest price. And that was negotiating for me in the beginning. Um, about a decade later, I got my first real sales position that I applied to. I sold Cutco knives. Um, oh, I'm sure you've heard of them. Of those? those are yes. awesome. They are awesome. So it was really easy to sell. And that was one of my first sales learnings was you you want to sell something that is really easy that you also would actually use. Were you selling those door to door? I was actually cold calling people. So I initially started within my network. uh, So my friends and family and people within my neighborhood Mm -hmm. and 
fortunately I had some help from my mom who would connect me with some of her friends and I would always pitch it not as selling knives, but just selling the attempt to, to speak with them about the knives. So I think that was also a core lesson for me uh, in sales. I'm not just selling the product immediately, especially during the first call. You want to sell just a meeting with them because once you have that meeting, once you have that one-on-one -on -one time with someone, you can get to know them, talk to them, talk to them about their problems. Uh, since I actually physically had meetings with them and I went to their house, we would compare their product, which was their knives with my knives. And we would get to cut physical rope, cut a penny in half, uh, slice grapes and see how uh, sharp those grapes were. And I got to say, Kay, I... I did upset some of the the husbands because they thought their knives were much sharper than they th they thought possible. But um, that was really my my first uh, my first introduction. So can, can I just jump in a little bit because yeah. we got Cutco knives as a gift from a client nice. and engraved, and yeah, they nice. yeah. are so amazing. They are so sharp. They're really lifetime tools. However, mm -hmm. I have to say, I cut part of my finger off with one. Yeah. <laughs> You're not alone. I had to go to the ER. I mean, I <laughs> I had no idea. So they are just as sharp today. So just a little shout out for Cutco knives. I know they're spendy, but they are totally worth it. So um, I love the fact though, that you got with people, got to know them. And I know you're familiar with the, the uncopyable framework, working on the next step. You know, there's of course the you know, comparison to dating and marriage. You don't ask someone to marry you on the first uh, date. So I, I like the fact that even at an early age, you were aware of that, that you have to establish that relationship and not just talk about, here's my knife that's made of this type of material or, or whatever. So, so I love Absolutely. that. So that's where it started. Good background. So what, what happened from there? Well, it's key to know that both my parents were in sales. So my dad was in insurance. He started his own insurance agency and my mom was in marketing, which she would go to all of the Southeast region, uh, Winn-Dixie's, if you're not familiar with that. It's I've a heard of them, chain. yeah. Yes. And, um, and she would sell the products of uh, the food company that she was working for. So I felt that I always had... Uh, some of the sales knowledge from a young age. And one of the books that my father recommended to me uh, around when I was a teenager was How to Win Friends and Influence People. And by Dale Carnegie. Yes. Right? One of the classic, classic. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the key lessons there is to always listen. So to listen more than you're speaking. Um, because then you can know about your potential prospects problems or your potential friend problems. Um, and when I say friend, I mean that whoever you're selling to, you want to really think about the long-term game. And so when you want to have a friend, <laughs> you want to try to get a good deal for them and, and make, uh, make an impact on their lives so that they can remember you and maybe refer you uh, in future business opportunities. And I think that's what all of sales is, is just keeping up a persona that is uniquely you and that builds that trust, that builds that confidence and that authority and what you know um, so that people can refer back to you. Because as we know in sales, referrals can be some of the biggest money makers of all. For sure. Referrals and recommendations. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. I just wanted to touch on something you said. You talked about trading acorns, which I bet you were really good at it. I'm sure it was really fun. And there's, you know, an investment company now. I don't know if that's what you call them, called Acorns, which yeah. I signed up for. So every week, I think I put ten dollars in or something really small nice. and it builds up. So you were ahead of the time with your ahead acorns. of the time, and I pro it probably inspired me to get into trading cryptocurrency. So as you know, I worked in Web3 and crypto. That was quite the leap because I did not have any tech experience. Previously, I was teaching English in Tunisia, North <laughs> Africa. So I jumped from Tunisia into 
uh, in t- back to the U.S. to work in a fintech company where I was working project management and cl- client services. Um, and to enter into blockchain technology, I decided I'm going to get my MBA to enter this this new industry. And so I applied to a couple programs, got waitlisted, and attempted to get into that one. And that one ended up being one that I've always wanted to get into, which was Georgetown. And I fortunately got in. And through that experience, I interned, as you mentioned, customer research. Um, I did partnerships for a metaverse real estate startup. And then I ended up recently in sales, doing sales and operations, building out the operational structure of the sales process and realizing at the end of uh, at the end of that, which was really my job post MBA, I realized sales just has always come naturally. And I think it's because of, as I mentioned, my parents and growing up and uh, some of the books that were recommended to me as a child. So Although I went to all these countries, I kind of came back to sales because I realized that sales is just building trust and building a reputation around a product or a service, but it's also just building it around yourself. And really that has led me to where I am right now, which is really selling myself online, um, as you know. And you know what? Life is all about sales. And, And of course, you know, we've got this new book that is not coming out for a few weeks called Uncopyable You. And so everybody, whether you are selling a product or service, whether it's something like Cutco Knives that I can understand, or it's crypto and blockchain, which I don't understand, (laughs) it's always building that trust and being an authority that they look up to. But, you know, you talk about how to win friends and influence people many of our clients, we work with them long term, are friends. I mean, they become friends. So like you said, you treat someone like they are a friend. People can figure that out. They can see that. So I'd love to hear just a little bit of the blockchain crypto thing, because Mm -hmm. I don't know, and I'm guessing most of our listeners don't really understand that. So what is that? What were you doing? Yeah, I can also offer a piece of advice for anyone who's listening who wants to enter something that they have no previous experience in, but they want to embrace, let's say, AI technologies or robotics, or maybe they want to get into uh, pharmaceuticals or or, uh, biomed, uh, like biotechnology, something that maybe they don't have experience in the past. Really, how I got into these technologies was selling myself online, which is basically writing and attending conferences that were mostly online because when I decided to pivot into this, it it was the, uh, the beginning of the pandemic. So there were all conferences online and I started to just connect with people who were working in that technology, try and get on a call with them because as we know in sales, just being able to get on a call with someone and being able to understand what is their language, how do they talk about things, helped me really change my vibe in a way for me to be able to speak about these technologies, blockchains, NFTs, crypto, Web3 technologies, and be able to utilize the same concepts in at least a business sense, not getting too technical, but in at least a business sense for me to actually approach people on LinkedIn and get me a job. So I actually got two jobs and an internship through LinkedIn, uh, just reaching out to people. So I just want to offer that as a piece of advice for anyone who wants to enter something new is just to dive deep into the industry and and just ask. I mentioned in the introduction that you uh, were on LinkedIn every day, I don't know for how long, but for quite a while and grew your number of connections, what was it from how many thousand, 2000 to 4,000, something like that? Yeah, 1600 to 3300. So about 2x in four months, 120 days every single day. Four months every single day. So I would love to hear more about that. Um, Because I know you post it every day, but it's really uh, not just posting, it's what you post and who you attract the attention of. So 
Tell us a little bit about that process. Today's podcast is sponsored by the acclaimed book, Uncopyable Sales Secrets, How to Create an Unfair Advantage and Outsell Your Competition by Kay Miller. If you want to make more sales, you need to read this book. We'll even get you started with a free download of the first two chapters. Go to uncopyablesales.com slash chapters to grab this offer right now. Absolutely. So when I started posting, I was still working as a part-time sales and strategy consultant for an AI startup. And I wanted to really start putting my ideas online because I've heard from some of these online internet personalities that one of the best ways to start working online is to really post online. And I've always been told that my writing style is is very engaging. And so that's something that I decided to lean into. For some people, it may be a video. It might be more so pictures. But for me, it was really just writing every single day. And I had no end date when I started this. Um, I started writing every day, actually, because I picked up this book, The Artist Way, by an artist, but I had learned from a couple entrepreneurs such as Tim Ferriss, uh, Noah Kagan, Mm -hmm. Cody Sanchez. These are people who are um, kind of well-known entrepreneurs who actually recommend this book as one to help get you to the next level in your business. And And by the the way, I'll put the names of these books and the authors in the show notes so you can find them. So I want to find them too. I know some of those authors, but so go on. Sorry for interrupting. No, no worries. So this book, the only requirement is to write three pages in the morning every day. And it's a 12 week process to unlocking the creativity within you, which creativity can just be unblocking creative um, blocks for your business or whatever is the next step for you. So I decided to take this on. And three days into it, I realized, why am I doing this just to myself? I'm going to start doing it for other people. So In the middle of this, I was writing in the morning, three pages every morning for 84 days because that was the length of the the 12 weeks. And I had no intention of stopping when I was doing it on LinkedIn. But I realized, though, that I started to get all of this data, I guess I'd say, for what I was most interested in. And I'll I'll tell you, I, I started writing about first my reflections on me entering blockchain technologies. And then I started writing about sales and business development. And that, it's funny because me writing about that actually got me another um, consulting gig, which was interesting. Um, me just talking about w- how to speak with clients and what does the the flow look like of a client going from prospect to purchase and post-purchase. So I was writing about topics that interested me, that I had experience in. And um, I realized that my life has been just, as you say, eclectic mix of testing different types of careers. And I'm grateful to have had these experiences, let's say, in sales, because that has helped me develop the knowledge to be able to speak with people um, confidently and be able to sell something that is a little bit different now is going to, to be myself. Well, there's a lot to unpack there that you talked about. But yes, content creation. And as a writer, I love to write. Uh, I've written a book on my own. And now I've co written a book. And it is a discipline. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, the momentum is huge. So really, it does. It starts out as a discipline. Steve likes to joke that when he wrote his first book back in 1990, he literally took a belt and belted himself to the chair every morning wow. and forced himself to write. And and then, of course, I'm sure your writing has evolved and you've learned things about yourself and, and others. And, of course, they've learned from you. So I think that's a great idea to force yourself. How many pages? You said three or five pages? Three pages every morning. So it ended up being... For 84 days, I forget how many that is. And I didn't do it all the time. I did, I calculated it and I did 98.5% of the pages, Uh, but it was pretty pretty good. 
That'd yeah. still be an A. That's what I feel. Yeah. <laughs> And by and, the way, you said you were lucky to get into Georgetown. I'm not, I'm sure it's not just luck. So you're <laughs> obviously you. a super sharp cookie, I'll say. And Steve, when he met you said, oh my gosh, you've got to meet Lauren. So I'm excited to be connected with you. Um, so were you posting only on LinkedIn or did you use other social platforms too? I was only posting on LinkedIn. I have plans to start posting other places because I've started experimenting with video. Um, so that's a little teaser for where I may be going next. But I've really just been diving into exactly what you and Steve have written about, which is being uncopyable. So when Steve recently gifted me his book, Uncopyable, I realized, oh, wow, this is exactly how I live my life. But I realized this is how... I need to embrace it even more because the current version of the uncopyable me is embracing a couple identity shifts, really. So the identity shift that I'm embracing now is being a content creator, is having these experiences in sales and customer research and project management and being able to embrace all of this and not just pivoting as I've done so many <laughs> times, but taking all this and going not from zero to one again, but from one to 10. And this is, this is why I'm, I'm really, I, I'm really grateful to have met really you, you and Steve, because I want to write books. Um, Steve really has lived the life that I don't know all of his life, right? But yeah, live yeah, part, you don't want to know all of it. Yeah, yeah. books, that's for sure. Yeah, the I books love the part. Fact Right. What makes you uncopyable is you. And just yeah. talking about your background, yes, don't just let that all go. This is part of who Lauren is and everybody listening, your story and your experience and whatever, your personality and quirks and loves and whatever, that all is part of who you are. And yes, put that all together and you have a, an uncopyable brand. And as I said, you've got some advantages because you have had really unusual experiences. Now I know as far as the future, like you said, we don't want to say pivot. <laughs> Number one, that's so overused now, but right. you're actually more of, of shifting your goals and, and you want to help others, right? And be a coach to help them learn what you've learned. So when, how do you see yourself going forward? That's a great question. And I'm really building that out right now. I have started with the experimentation phase, which has been building that audience, which has been testing what interests me, testing what interests other people. And now the next phase is really to not just put pen to paper, but to uh, build out a strategy of what is to come. And as I teased before, I'm hoping to move into bigger platforms and start my start my journey of book writing or starting my journey of creating a newsletter. So I think that as you and I just spoke with Steve right before we started this conversation, I think I want to lean more into, into this creation process and this self-exploration process, which as I understand, is not the traditional method as experienced with my parents' generation. Um, I can tell you that my parents who would qualify absolutely in the baby boomer generation experienced a time where there was maybe 10 jobs that you do, right? And they experienced a time where there is a set career path for people and and you have to lean into decades of experience before you become something like a coach. And now I realize that there's just so much opportunity with uh with what you can build. Myself having built rebuilt myself in hundreds of different ways that that there are people younger than me really who are very early gen Z and as I mentioned to you I'm at the er later gen of millennial like the cusp of Gen Z, right. but people who are younger than me who are building something of authority despite not having those years of experience. And I think that's really inspiring. And it really shows that you can create anything you want. And I'd also just love to uh, touch on some of the creators that are, that are 
existing within the sales ecosystem that I have also kind of dove, dove into within LinkedIn. For sure. Um, and we only have five minutes, if you can believe it, we might have to have you wow. back. <laughs> but yeah, tell us who you have you know, resonated with and could help the listener. Yeah. Let me just name two. Will Falkenberg and Daria Gerasimova. And I'll give you those for the show notes as well. Those are two people that I highly recommend following as someone if you are an early stage SDR or you want to see how you can use content to build a funnel for your the product that you're representing or the service that you're representing. I think those two people are really great representations of what is possible in B2B sales. And those people I connected with because I was testing out whether I wanted to go the full solopreneur sales route and decided I wanted to do more content creation. But, but what I recognize from them is that there is so much potential to get sales and inbound leads from people, from you just posting your knowledge about what your uh, product or service is online and making yourself vulnerable. So putting out a meme, putting out some a funny comment. And if anyone is looking to build their LinkedIn following, I have a couple tips that I've learned. So one, uh, you want to post in the morning. So I'm in Eastern time. So it's recommended 8 a.m. So you could schedule your posts in advance. Um, I know you're in Pacific, so that would be 5 a.m., but that would be recommended <laughs> to post in advance. And then two, it's recommended to comment on other people's posts within the 30 minutes that you have posted. And the and the specific person that you should comment on is your target audience. So whoever you want to be sell, whoever you want to sell to, whoever your marketing department your has moose. identified your moose, right? <laughs> yeah. Whoever exactly, who is that moose and define who that is. And that's the person you want to comment on. Well, uh, it, interesting because yes, my dad worked at one company, a retailer, his whole career. And that's what happened, like you said, but now, I mean, this is exciting for people like you and even people like me. I told you that I just interviewed someone. Her name is Vivica Von Rosen a couple episodes ago, actually episode number 70. Check that out. And she's doing a reinvention and she's coaching women over 50. So here you are on the very early side of the spectrum. Like you said, you're still not the youngest, but content creation, that is really powerful. There's another woman I interviewed and her name is Kate Stroshny. And she is in the data world, and she is somebody you should check out. I'll put her LinkedIn. I interviewed her. She's got maybe 170,000 followers, I think, right now. And when I asked her, I said, how much time do you spend creating content versus consuming? Well, she creates much more than she consumes, but she mm -hmm. does spend time, like you said, commenting on other people's posts and connecting with them. But- Creating the content gives you authority. Absolutely. So that's an excellent strategy. So what, as we close out, I don't even know how to sum this up. There's been so many great gems that you've delivered. And as I said, I'll put this information in the show notes. But what would you like to close out with as your message? And then also, this is a two-part question. Uh, where can people reach you and find you to explore more of what you've got and what you're offering and the future of what you're doing and how you might be able to help them? So I'd like to leave the message that to trust your gut, trust your emotions, take that leap, take that step. And if you don't know what is next, then write to yourself only this book that I mentioned, The Artist's Way, really unblocks a lot of creativity within you. Uh, just from writing to yourself endlessly for three pages, you could write anything you want. So I think that sometimes we just need to talk to ourselves. So that can help us maybe unlock that next deal or uh, help like craft a negotiation rather than just thinking in our head, putting that action to paper. And then, yeah, if people want to find me. They can find me absolutely on LinkedIn, Lauren Gibson, or you can go to my website, laurenrosegibson.com, where you can book a meeting with me 
or find me again, as I said, there on LinkedIn? Well, from beginning with selling Cutco knives, <laughs> you've had quite a life in the last, I don't know how many years since then. I don't know. But uh, it's interesting. The same concepts have applied through your life, but also that aspect of content creation for others, but also to get to know yourself better, I think is excellent advice. So Lauren, I really appreciate you spending this time on my podcast with me. Listeners are really in for a treat and uh, hope to do it again. So Lauren, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you, Kay. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for listening to this episode of Uncopyable Women in Sales, your source for secrets you can use to make more sales. Check the show notes for links and contact information. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please spread the word by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a five-star review. You can always learn more by going to uncopyablesales.com slash podcast. Until next time, go out and supercharge your sales like a true uncopyable rock star.